This game is brought to you by Pyatt's Bakery in Perrysburg. Oh, the good sports are on WSBD, the game of the week. Six, Doug Smith, a senior. At left guard, number 62, Bruce Gardner, a junior. At center, 55, Brian Bordeaux, a junior. At right guard, 60, Jeff Gamitter, a senior. At, 70, uh, at right tackle, number 73, Jeff Watson, a senior. At tight end, number 80, Chuck Grass, a junior. At the quarterback, number 18, Bill Park, a junior. At tailback, 43, Bob Turpening, a junior. At fullback, 39, Matt Zitzer, a junior. And at the wingback flanker, number 33, Ed Moss, a junior. For Perrysburg on defense. At left end, number 53, Doug Jones, a senior. Left tackle, 51, Don Whitner, a sophomore. At middle guard, 31, Jace Swede, a sophomore. At right tackle, number 72, Steve Seaman, a senior. At right end, number 50, Greg Cure, a senior. At the linebackers, number 42, Brian Pummel, a senior. Number 32, Rod Mercer, a senior. At the stinger, a monster back, number 24, Phil Kokonakis, a junior. At the wide side halfback, number 10, Eric Tudor, a senior. At safety, number 41, Dave Neal, a junior. Two teams here uh, that have had one like opponent, and that is Lake High School. Yeah, it's going. Lake Lake last, last week, 12-7, whereas Anthony Wayne lost 20 to nothing a couple weeks ago. Marysburg is 4-2 going into this game. They are 3-1 and one in the league. Anthony Wayne is 2-4. and four. This is a must game for the Marysburg Yellow Jackets to stay in contention for the NLL title. Right now, the Perrysburg Yellow Jackets coming out of the field in their gold pants, the black jerseys, the gold helmets, and the gold numerals, and uh, the generals will be coming out momentarily. Well, Thomas, we have a good night for football, although, as we said, that wind is really gusting out there. I would say it's got to be gusting up to 25 miles per hour, and now the generals come out of the field in their white uniforms, the silver helmets, and the blue uh, numerals. Wind, to me, will be a definite factor in this football game tonight. Jerry, it always is. It's like Bowling Green. Uh, every Friday night that we're here, it seems the wind kicks up. And uh, in the numerous games that we broadcast from the stadium, it always seems it's cranked up uh, on those particular evenings. Anthony Wayne will receive. Anthony Wayne will be running out of an eye. Will be running out of split backs. We'll be seeing Perrysburg use a 5-2 angle defense. They had a big job in replacing Mr. Jacoby of last year, a super middle guard who was an All-State performer, and they have picked uh, a sophomore, Mr. Jay Swede, number 31, to uh, uh, be the heir apparent. So we're about ready to get cranked up here, Jerry. The ball is on the tee, and again, this is one of those evenings where the ball will probably be blown off the tee quite often. Well, Tom, we're getting to that point of the season, too, where these games are very, very critical. Obviously, tonight, a very big game for Perrysburg to say in this Northern Lakes League race. Next week, we have Maumee and Springfield, which, of course, is a key one for Maumee. And then two weeks down the road, it's very likely that uh, Lake High School and Maumee will be undefeated, and that should be some kind of a game from Lake High uh, two weeks from tonight, and we'll be there. Uh, we'll be right on top of this uh, very hot NLL uh, title race. And again, if Perrysburg uh, hopes to have any shot at it, they're going to have to win the rest of their games and hope that uh, uh, Maumee can knock off Lake in two weeks and then turn right around and knock off uh, Maumee themselves back here in a couple weeks. Rod Mercer has the ball teed up, and we're about set to go. Deep man for Anthony Wayne's generals back there is Bob Turpening. There's the kickoff, and it goes to Turpening at the 15 to the 20, and he is brought down around the 25-yard line and it'll be first down and 10 yards to go. On the tackle, number 65 for the Perrysburg Yellow Jackets, Jim King. All right, Anthony Wayne then will take over first and 10. We're going to call it their own 26-yard line on the near hash mark, the western side. And we've got a good vantage point here at the 50-yard line. And the generals move out. Bill Park is their quarterback now. He'll split his setbacks two yards. Turpening and Zitzer. Park calling signals and Park. And there's a collision in the backfield between the quarterback and the running back. 
And there is a loss on the play back to about the 24-yard line as Perrysburg was in on top. There was a poor exchange, not really a poor exchange between center and quarterback, but a mix-up in the backfield. And there's a loss from the 26 back to the 24-yard line. The whole front of that Perrysburg line in on the tackle. And the first man there actually to get him was uh, Steve Seaman. Well, those are the things that really give coaches gray hairs, especially the first play of the game. Well, that was Matt Zitzer and the quarterback Park running into each other. We had flankers out wide and left. There was a reverse handoff over the left side and squirming out for some yardage is Bob Turpening, and he gets it out over the 25 to about the 28 or 9 yard line where he is stacked up there. Again, good pursuit by the Perrysburg Yellow Jackets. And let's give credit on the tackle to Doug Jones. They'll spot the ball at the 29 yard line, the initial on the 26, and that'll bring up a third down and seven yards to go. Just underway here from Perrysburg High School along the expressway out wide to the right now comes number 19 for Anthony Wayne. That's uh, Randy Lauder. Hark sets him down. He's now on the eye formation. Calling signals, and he gives to his tailback straight ahead. He's got a big hole at the 35, at the 40, at the 45, and all the way out near the midfield stripe. Running the football that time was Bob Pippening, and he got a big hole over the left side. Well, that was enough for a first down, Jerry. Finally brought down in the uh, secondary. Tudor was there, along with Heilman, but that is a first and 10 now for Anthony Wayne. That's at the 45-yard line. Out wide of the left is Reeder. And again, a yard split in the backfield between Turpening and Zitzer, and Park is your quarterback. And he gives, trying to get outside, is Zitzer, and he is hit right there at the line of scrimmage. Good defensive play on the part of the Perrysburg Yellow Jackets, Jays Swede. They try to run a little crossing action in the backfield, Jerry. And middle guard Swede uh, diagnosed the play and was in there for a loss of about two yards. Absolutely, Tom. The ball is now at the 43, where it's second down and 12 yards to go. Reader out wide to the left. And out wide to the right here for Anthony Wayne then comes Randy Lauder. Again, a two-yard split this time in the backfield. Park calling signals. He gives over the right side. Running the ball is Zitzer, and he is able to get it back to the 45, and that's about it. He's brought down by Jay Swede once again. And let's call it now third down, just about 10 yards to go. He's right back there to the initial line of scrimmage. 9-12 remaining in the first quarter. There's no score. Anthony Wayne and Perrysburg. Anthony Wayne took the opening kickoff. And they've moved it. Uh, down to the uh, Anthony Wayne, 40, just shy of the 45. We'll call it the 45, keep it even, where it is third down and 10. Now out wide to the right is Eddie Moss for Anthony Wayne. Park calling signals, one yard split in the backfield. And he drops back. Little pop pass over the middle, and it is incomplete and almost intercepted. Almost intercepted by number 53, Doug Jones. Jones dropping off from his uh, defensive end position in pass coverage, Tom Gatto, almost picked it off. Yes, it was a very cheap fake uh, to the uh, diving back quarterback set right up. It was pass all the way. Back to do the punting then is Randy Lauder for Anthony Wayne standing at his own 32. Gets a good snap. The block was on and he gets the kick away. Back to make the reception up to 10, to the 15, to the 20, to the 25. It hit and hit hard there. On the play was uh, Greg uh, Gumminger and it'll be first down and 10 yards to go from Perrysburg at that point. On the tackle was Eddie Moss for Anthony Wayne. So it's first down and 10 yards to go for, for Peberg as they'll take over at their own 27. Pheasant will be the quarterback. Hummel, Ryder, old Easy Ryder in there in that backfield for Perrysburg. As the Jackets are huddled back at their 20-yard line and they move out of the now, Doug Jones out over the wall. Pheasant's the quarterback, and he has what amounts to a key formation in the backfield and a handoff trying the right side. Running with the football is Troy Malott. And Troy is able to get it up over the 25 and out to about the 29-yard line, and that is it. Met by the middle of that Anthony Wayne line. And in on the tackle, uh, Doug uh, Coucher for Anthony Wayne. So, from the 27, let's call up the 30-yard line. Give him three. It'll be second and seven for Perrysburg. Anthony Wayne is starting out in a 4-3 defensive look, Jerry. Tom, that's a T formation, but the fullback is actually cheating up a little bit. It almost looks like a wishbone. Does it again. Hands off and trying the left side. And there's a big hole. Please, out over the 35 to the 40 to the 45, I believe. And we'll check that yard marker for you. And on the tackle was Brahaney. That's a first down for Jeff Priest, the wingback. Uh, he, he's listed as a wingback. As you said, they are in a, a T formation with a fullback set up. 
to uh, afford a chance for him to fake into the line of scrimmage as he did. It was a crossing action play, picked up the first down. That is the 45-yard line at Perrysburg, where it is first down and 10 yards to go. Pheasant calling signals, open feet to the right, and he gives to his third man through. Piece the ball, carry. He's got five to the 50-yard line, and he's hit and belted down there by Chuck grass of Anthony Wayne, but he got the midfield stripe, and there's a gain on the play of about five yards. So, second down and about five to go. Perrysburg just over the midfield stripe, moving right to left across your dial with 6.59 remaining here in the first quarter. There's no score, but Perrysburg is taking this punt now from their own 27-yard line, and they're on the move right now. They have two tight ends, and again, we're going to call it the T formation in the backfield with Pheasant calling signals between the hash marks. Quarterback sneak, and he's got two or three yards. Very close to the 47-yard line. Gang tackling there. And I want to wait until the young man gets off the bottom of that pile and give him credit. That's number 69, Kevin Ireland for Anthony Wayne. They'll bring up about a third down and two and a half, Jerry. That previous play was a... a uh, really looked like an isolation play. Out of the T formation, the two lead backs were leading through the hole and blocking for the following back. Now let's call it the 47 of Anthony Wayne, where it is third and a long two to go. Again, power high this time. Hand up over the right side. First down and 10 for Perrysburg. Running hard, Brian Pummel, the ball carrier. And Pummel is pummeled down across the far side of the field. First man there to get him was Rob Booker for Anthony Wayne. But that's another first down for the Jackets. That's their second first down. This drive started from the Perrysburg 27-yard line, and it is now... At the 43. 43, Jerry. Good kickout block by wingback Jeff Priest in that I formation. Jones out over the ball, and the ends are in tight, and open field is to the left of the press box side. T in the backfield, Pheasant calling signals. He gives uh, to Priest, and Priest is hit right there along the line of scrimmage. He might have gotten a yard on the play, and that's it. Chuck Grass on the tackle. And let's call it second down, Tom, and still about 10 yards to go, a short 10. That time they tried to trap the uh, linebacker, but the linebacker was on the move, and Chuck Grass uh, would have none of it, made a fine tackle. And again, the Jackets come out, ends are in, T formation, Pheasant calling signals. Ball between the hash mark, he gives it to his fullback over the right side, big hole. He's got the first down and more at the 30, at the 25, and down he goes. On the run, throw him a lot. Big hole opened up over the right side of the Perrysburg line, and he was picking him up and laying him down on the last man there to get him. Or else it might have been Bader, Greg Booker, on the tackle for Anthony Wayne, but that's first and 10 now for Perrysburg at the AW25. Fine job by the right side of that Perrysburg offensive line. Uh, right tackle Pete Siebenek, tight end Rob Hall did a fine job uh, on their double team. Good kickout block by Jeff Priest again. At the 25-yard line of Anthony Wayne, where it is first and 10. Open field now to the left. Western side, T formation, handoff, dive over the right side. Being a little yardage there is... Steve Ryder, and Steve got uh, maybe a couple of yards in the play. That's about it, the left side of that line, way across the far side of the field. And the first man there to get him was Greg Brooker once again. Jerry, when uh, Coach Pratt and the other coaches look at the film and they go over with the team, they'll tell Ryder that if he'd gone inside, uh, he'd have picked up much more yardage. He, he missed the hole by going outside. 4.34 to go first quarter, no score. Perrysburg high, open field left. Perhaps a delay of game, or perhaps encroachment of the neutral zone. Remember, in high school now, you do not have to make contact. You do not have to make contact. If you encroach that neutral zone, they'll immediately throw the flag and walk off five. And in this particular case, a five-yard walk-off against the generals of Anthony Wayne. And I'm looking for the signal up here in the press box. That's offside, offside Jerry. Yeah. I, I don't know who it was on, so we can't uh, point the, the onus on any one of those generals. Well, it's second down out, about four to go, Perrysburg. And the ball is inside the 20 now at the 19-yard line. Open field is to the left. Well, the press box side, if you're familiar with Perrysburg Stadium, Pheasant keeps the ball on his hip and option it at the 15 and down right there. He optioned down the line and a very, very nice tackle that time, I might add, by Doug Kutcher of Anthony Wayne. It'll be close to... It is close. Uh, the ball is might have a measurement. just inside the 15. That's about where he had to go. They are going to measure, Jerry. The old bald eagle, Bill Rupert, says first down. He hasn't missed one in about 35 years. <laughs> Has he been around that long? Oh, in well, some. Well, there it is. He may have just missed his hey. first. Mm -hmm. He denies that he called it. Yeah. He denies that he, he made no statement on that first down or not. Uh, 
It is just shy, inches I, shy of the I first down. I certainly, well, my father a long time ago said, never disagree with your elders, and I didn't want to disagree with <laughs> <his> elders. <own man. laughs> <laughs> he has no mic, uh, Tom Gatto. He cannot retort here. <laughs> That's all right. That's but there's good. one right in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's third down and just inches. Perrysburg will call up the Anthony Wayne 15-yard line. Wing left. Pitch back. Trying to turn the corner 15. At the 10, and he's down there at the 10. Actually, he slipped under his own power. Running the football was Greg uh, Gominger for Perrysburg. You know, Jerry, it's interesting. Every time there's a crucial situation, Perrysburg jumps back into their normal eye formation, that time an eye wing, and Gominger got the pitch, ran the sweep for the first down. They can still pick up a first down at about the half-yard line, Jerry, I believe. Absolutely, Tom. Uh, the length of the football is just over the 10. Pheasant is your quarterback, and he's got him lined up on the eye formation now. Open field is to the right. And a little reverse handoff on a trap play and running hard with the football over the right side is Jeff Priest. The flow came left. He handed back he Pheasant to Priest. And a little counteraction type of play or trap over the right side. And uh, frankly, I thought he was going to get more yardage than that. It closed down very quickly. A good job of the defensive front of the Anthony Wayne line there, uh, led by uh, Nick uh, Coneman. He got about, well, maybe two, two and a half yards in the play. We'll call it the eight-yard line where it's second down. Second down. Pheasant hands off dive play over the right side and churning with those legs is Jeff Priest. And he got it down to about the six-yard line, and that's about it. Playing a fine game is Chuck Grass on defense here for Anthony Wade. He's had about three already. We'll call it the six where it is third down, six for the touchdown, and just a little less for the first down. Harrisburg has yet to throw the ball. Two and a half minutes to go first quarter. There is no score. And this quarter has moved right along. All right, they move out of it with Do Jones over the ball. And now, timeout call. Timeout on the field with a score. Perrysburg, nothing. Anthony Wayne, nothing. Third down. Six to go for the touchdown. A little less for the first down for Perrysburg. Pheasant is your quarterback. And he's got a eye in the backfield. Open field to the right. Reverse pitch it. He pitches the ball out at the five. Inside, outside at the three, at the two. It's a touchdown. Greg Gominger. Gominger on the nifty run that time. I thought Tommy's going to be hemmed in around the five-yard line. He made an in-cut. Then somehow he got outside and ran to daylight. Jerry, they ran that uh, sweep into a high slot. And as you mentioned, he squared off the goal line real well, made a break to the inside, threw the defensive uh, back in, and went to the outside for the touchdown. Point try coming up here then for the Yellow Jackets. the kick is in the air and the kick is good so a timeout on the field with the uh, score the Perrysburg Yellow Jackets 7 and the Anthony Wayne Generals nothing on the kickoff down the road at the 20 to the near side the 25 the 30 and out to the 35 yard line where he is brought down first and 10 and on the tackle Barry Johnston for Perrysburg so first down and 10 yards to go now for the Generals of Anthony Wayne and they'll work it from their own 36-yard line, trailing 7 to nothing here with two minutes remaining in the first quarter. Bordeaux out over the ball. Your quarterback is Park. Turpening is in there at tailback, and the fullback is Zitzer. We may have a new tailback in there. Handoff to the tailback, and he slips and skids for a couple of yards. That's Turpening the ball carrier. And so we'll give him a, maybe a yard on the play. Well, they say his knee went right down there at the... Uh, 37-yard line. Give him a yard. Second down and nine yards to go. Tom, I believe we've got a new running back in there now for Perrysburg. Or rather for uh, Anthony Wayne. We'll check it out here for a moment. Nope. Zitzer interpreting. Are your setbacks? A wing left in the backfield. Park calling signals from his own 37. And there's going to be encroachment, I believe, on the part of Perrysburg. They were moving unless they were pulled off. They may have been pulled off. And if that's the case, it'll be a five-yard walk off against the Generals, and I believe that's what it's going to be. Illegal procedure against mm -hmm. the Anthony Wayne Generals. That'll bring up a second and about 14. He gained about a yard on that first yeah, play, I'll, I'll, I'll say 14 and a half, and we'll split the difference. All right. Minute and 17 seconds. 15, 14, the clock running. 7-0 Peberg. Out wide of the left is Reeter now. And they'll line up in a... 
slot left. Moss is the slot man. Park is your quarterback in the I formation. He's back to throw the football at the 25. He's got some time. Now he's in trouble. He's going to be sacked back there at the 20-yard line. Jerry, Park wanted to throw to his tight end, Chuck Grass, who had dropped back. It looked like a little tight end screen to the right side, but the Perrysburg defense uh, would not have any of that and smothered him for a big loss. Seaman was the man to get him, and it's back at the 20-yard line, so it's now third down and 26 for Anthony Wayne with only 24 seconds left here in the first quarter. They'll break out of it now and send Moss out wide to the right. Reader out wide to the left, and Park splits his setbacks about two yards. Calling signals, he's back to throw the football. Draw play, fumble, recovered by Anthony Wayne's Matt Zitzer. Well, Perrysburg really wasn't fooled on that either, although the fumble by Zitzer certainly negated any kind of gain at all that Anthony Wayne might have pulled off there. So put it out at the 24-yard line, where it is fourth down now and still a mile to go. With only That is the quarter. That is the end of the first quarter with a score of Perrysburg 7, Anthony Wayne nothing. We'll start this second quarter with a score. Uh, Jerry, I... 7-0. Uh, well, there are two seconds uh, to go in the first quarter. And uh, Coach Pratt ran out there to talk to the officials, but the timeout was taken with two seconds to go. And it could have been a very good move for Anthony Wayne because they'll have the win at their back for this punt. So the clock is being run down for uh, two seconds to go in the first quarter. I might make mention of that uh, third and long situation, Jerry. Uh, many times teams going into that situation, uh, the obvious play is a pass. But defensively, you have to look for a screen. You have to look for a draw or a trap play because because everyone thinks it's, there's going to be a pass. You always want to go with something that's not obvious. All right, so a punting situation here for Anthony Wayne. And, of course, they have, uh, as you said, Tom, the wind with him. Uh, Lauder is back, and he gets a good punt out of there. It's going to nestle down and be received at the 35, outside at the 40. Hit and brought down there at the 40-yard line or 41. It'll be good field position for Perrysburg from that point. On the run back for Perrysburg uh, was uh, Greg Gumminger. Greg Gumminger really did miss the wall, Jerry. It's unfortunate for Perrysburg. That's the end of the first quarter. We'll keep it here, however, since all we're going to do is change uh, over the midfield stripe and remind you that tonight's game is brought to you with the best wishes of the Lorraine Oil Company, Casmeyer Supermarkets, Charlie's Dodge, Home Federal Savings and Loan, Damn shoulders. Nice to have them along. There was a breakdown in communication with the the, the uh, secondary because the wall was set up to his left and he ran to the right. And had he been able to get to the wall, I feel he could have gone a long way. Okay, Perrysburg back to work now. And we'll have Pheasant in there at quarterback. Hubble, Ryder, Priest. They line up now and they... I formation. Doesn't calling signals at his own 41. Pitches back and trying to get inside. He finds a little hole. Still running hard with a football is uh, Brian Pummel. Over the 46-yard line. He is hit and brought down there by Chuck Grass. And so from the 41 to the 46, about a five-yard gain. Second down and five. That's the very same play that they ran for the touchdown, Jerry. They pull the front side guard on the sweep. And uh, had he cut to the outside, he probably picked up the first down. We're into the second quarter, 7-0 Perrysburg. They have the ball at their own 46-yard line now with a slot right of the backfield. Pheasant calling signals. Ball between the hash mark. Hands it to his fullback straight ahead, right of the ball carry. And he gets it out to about the 48-yard line. Lowers his head, and he's brought down right there. Now the tackle for Anthony Wayne, Kevin Ireland. Bring up third down. About three. Third and about three. 10.59 to go in the half. It is 7 Nothing in favor of Perrysburg. Perrysburg yet to put it in the air. Anthony Wayne has attempted a couple of passes, but uh, have been unable to get him on track. Slot right. Priest is the slot man. Pheasant calling signals. Ball between the hash mark. Quarterback sneak. Fumbles the football recovered by Anthony Wayne. That ball came squirting out of there around the 50-yard line. And look what I got. Rob Booker. That's a big break for Anthony Wayne because with, without that uh, fumbled snap, it's very possible Perrysburg could have picked up the first down. And, of course, with the great field position Perrysburg had, they were on the move. 
And so we'll give it over to Anthony Wayne here now at their own 47-yard line, and they'll move right to left into that wind. Your quarterback is Park, and he has a slot right in the backfield. He'll split his setbacks a yard. Open field is to the left. And he's back to run and throw the football on the option play. Tries to turn the corner and got it out to about the 49, and that's it. Good defensive play that time by Jay Swede for Perrysburg. Well, Jay Swede is certainly making his presence known in that uh, Perrysburg defense. And uh, the offensive center, Brian Bordeaux for Anthony Wayne, certainly has his hands full this evening. Give him about a yard. It'll be second and nine. Anthony Wayne up at the 49-yard line. High in the backfield. Twin flankers out wide to the right. Park calling signals, and he gives to his second man, 50. And to the 48-yard line, running the football is Turpening, and that's about it. Running him out of bounds here on the near side was Jim Heilman. He got it across the midfield stripe to the 48-yard line of Perrysburg, where it is third down now. Third and uh, about seven. Coming Nine. into this game, Anthony Wayne has had some problems scoring points. Uh, they have two victories defeating Sylvania Northview and Rossford. Out wide to the right is Reader. Here's that third down possession play now. Let's see if Park tries to put it up. Slot right in the backfield. The slot man is Moss. Pitch back. And almost losing that football and running with it is Trippening. And he got it to about the 45. And Rudy got nailed into the side. I want a hit put on that time by Jim Heilman. You can hear that all the way up here in the press box. Woo! Oh, that was a picture tackle, Jerry, and coming from a sophomore, that certainly should uh, warm the cockles of Chuck Pratt's heart because that young man really put a stick on him. Well, that brings up a fourth down now. Just about three yards to go with the ball inside the 45 at the 44. And a punting situation here for Anthony Wayne. Back to do the punting then will go Randy Lauder at his 45. And he gets the kick away as Shanker. He shanked it off the side of his foot uh, right around the... 30, 31-yard line, the official spots the ball. Well, I'll tell you, Tommy, of course, punting into that stiff wind, that probably had something to do with it, but the other thing was that he had to kick that in a hurry because the block was on. He had very little time. And, of course, you always coach a young man to punt the ball low into the wind, but that time I think he uh, overcommitted himself, and as you mentioned, it did go off the side of his foot, and it was a very poor punt. Pheasant leads him out now, and he'll say, and Dave Neal out wide to the left. A pie in the backfield. He's optioning it down. Loosing ball. He's got it. Uh, Anthony Wayne, I believe Perrysburg got it back. Anthony Wayne had a shot at it. They really did. Number 40 for Anthony Wayne was right there. Booker, but uh, somehow that ball was able to uh, squeeze out from under his grasp, and it was recovered by Perrysburg at the about the line of scrimmage, Steve Ryder. Well, Steve Ryder was the pitch man on that play, and the, it was a very poor pitch, and he just couldn't get to it, and an Anthony Wayne man had a shot at it, bounced off his helmet back into the arms of Steve Ryder. Well, actually, he gained a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Perrysburg at their own 32. Slot left, back to throw the football. Setting up Pheasant out of the backfield, and the intended receiver on that play was Jeff Priest, but the ball was well overthrown. Defending on the play... That was a cross back here. And so they'll bring it back and stop the clock with 9.05 to go on the half. 7 nothing. Perrysburg. Third down, 9. Peeberg at their own 32-yard line. Again, a what amounts to a slot left in the backfield. Pheasant calling signals. Pitches back. He... Oh, Anthony Wayne diagnosed that beautifully. That was a version of the old flick flicker play, I believe, coming up there. But I'll tell you, someone that was not fooled was Nick Kronman. What happened was Pheasant uh, took it from center, pitched back to his tailback. Pummel, Pummel pitched it back to the quarterback, Pheasant, and he was nailed right there, back at the 26-yard line, a loss on the play of about six yards. This That'll bring, bring up, up a the fourth first, down. Uh, first Perrysburg punt, Jerry. They have the wind with him. Standing at the 15-yard line. He gets the snap, and he gets the kick away. That was Steve Seaman. The ball is picked up back here at the 20. Trying to get outside. A lot of black jerseys down there, and straight ahead he lowers the head, and that's Greg Brooker, and he is nailed right around the 29-yard line. Boy, he had nowhere to go. The first man down there for Perrysburg was Jay Swede. So, first and ten now for Anthony Wayne, and they'll start it from their own 29. Well, I like the looks of that young man. He's got a fine uh, future ahead of him if he continues uh, hitting the way he is. Oh, he really sticks him, doesn't he? 
Wow, 29-yard line, first and 10. Anthony Wayne trailing 7-0, and they're going into this very stiff wind. They're moving right to left across Jadile as we look out into the field. The quarterback is Bill Park, and he lines him up in an eye formation. Zitzer and Turpening back there. And he options back to run a throw. There's the end around. And running with the football is Reeder. And Reeder is, gets away from one at the 20. And then he's down around the 25-yard line, way across the far side of the field. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Jerry. Both of these coaching staffs have done a super job preparing these young men for this this game. Uh, these trick plays uh, are not really trick because they're well diagnosed and the defenses are prepared for them. Bill Kokonekis on the tackle for uh, Perrysburg. And he was not. He really stayed at home, he Tom, on that. Did. Question about it. It'll ring up a second down here now. And about 13, there's a loss in the play back to the uh, 25. Park calling signals. Anthony Wayne unable to get on track here in this first half. Slant over the right side, and he's got about four yards. Running with the football is Zitzer, and he's hit by the left side of that Perrysburg line. And the first man to get him there for the Yellow Jackets, Don Whitner. He'll spot the ball at the 30, where it is now third down and about nine yards to go. Jerry, Don Whitner is the son of the former Tornado, Phil Whitner, yep. who was a super ball player in his day. Bordeaux out over the ball, and out wide to the left is Doug Reeder. 6.40 left in the half. 7 up in Perrysburg. Park sets him down. He splits his setbacks about a yard. There's a dive over the right side, and oh my, oh my, nowhere that time because of Steve Seaman. He read it beautifully, stayed right there at his defensive tackle position, and he nailed. Sitzer trying his right side. He got it right there to the 30-yard line, and that was it. Good hitting going on out there right now in this entire first half. 7-0 Perrysburg. Back to do the punting then, Randy Lauder. And back here in twin safety. On the near side is number 28 for Perrysburg. There is the snap and there is the kick. Uh, that's a, it looked like about a six-yard punt. Boy, there. boy, that's really wicked into that wind. About a 12-yard punt. Again, he tried to kick that low. And what happened was he kind of hit a squibber off the side of his foot. Absolutely no return because the ball was shanked into the sideline uh, in front of the Anthony Wayne bench. They're going to spot that ball at the 35, 39 yard line. I think I was right, Jerry, the first time. It was about a six yard punt. Ah. Key formation, Pheasant calling signals from the 39 of Anthony Wayne. Here's a great opportunity for Perrysburg trying the right side, running hard. Right of the ball carrier, and he is hit and brought down there. The first man to get it, Jerry. Could be a face mask. All right. Was a Brooker. There is a flag. It is a face mask. It's a big penalty after a fairly decent uh, defensive play. That'll move Perrysburg deep into Anthony Wayne territory. It's 7 nothing Perrysburg. <laughs> Only five minutes and 40 seconds left here in the first half as this uh, first stanza has really zipped along. We've only gone about 35 minutes, and we're nearing halftime already. Well, maybe everyone wants to get out of here tonight and go back and watch the rest of the world. Well, stay. they've got a big halftime uh, schedule, so they want to get that cranked up. Okay. Homecoming here at Perrysburg. It is homecoming, and I understand the Kent State University marching band, and there they are down to my left. They'll take on, not the band, but the football team will take on Bowling Green State tomorrow at Dwight Perry Field. First and 10 now at the 20-yard line. Perrysburg at the Anthony Wayne 20. Back to runner throw the football is Pheasant. He stretches him out. He's going to be sacked. Uh, out of bounds. And on the pursuit, Jeff Committer. Now there's a flag right. out of bounds. Late Jerry. hit. Late hit. Late hit. Out of bounds. Dead ball foul. Late hit on the quarterback, Pheasant. He was hit and brought down. Well, actually knocked out of bounds. Out about the 24-yard line. He would have lost about four on the play. But uh, here, if in fact, Perrysburg elects to accept this penalty, which I'm sure they will, two big penalties going against the generals of Anthony Wayne. A face mask penalty, and now uh, this one, uh, unsportsmanlike conduct or late hit or roughing the pan, anything you want to call it, it's going to be a hefty walk-off against the Anthony Wayne generals to the 11-yard line. A personal foul. Yeah. Well, you don't understand those type type uh, penalties. Uh, the young man was out of bounds. There was no need for any further hitting there. Well, and again, going back to what I said earlier, these types of mistakes really uh, cause coaches some ulcer problems as well as some gray hairs. I think we have a timeout for a measure, uh, measure here, Jerry. Yep. The ball is at the 11-yard line with that penalty. 
Got a nice crowd on hand here tonight at Perrysburg Stadium. And uh, the weatherman has cooperated, but it has chilled down. And I'll tell you, we have a very hefty wind coming out of that. They're oh, short out of the northeast, about, right? uh, seven inches, Jerry. All right. So it is second down, really, and just inches to go for that first down and 11 away from the score. Seven nothing, Perrysburg leading it. It's been a defensive struggle here in this first half. And of course, as we noted at the top of the broadcast, win certainly a factor here tonight. All right, the Jackets are huddling back at the 20 and they break out of it now. Pheasant is in there at quarterback. He lines him up in what amounts to a power eye and the ends are in. Pheasant calling signals. And he pitches back and trying to get outside. Please, at the 15, at the 10, at the 5. And he's down right around the four-yard line across the far side of the field. And good pursuit over there, I might add, by Doug Kutcher for Anthony Wayne. But that'll be a first down and then some. And now it's first and goal for Perrysburg at the four-yard line of Anthony Wayne. Great situation here now for the Jackets leading 7-0 with 5 to go in the half with a tremendous opportunity of going in again. Perrysburg again goes to the sweep on a short yardage situation. They line up in a power eye in the backfield. As it is your quarterback, open field to the right. And he gives over the rest side. Pummel and he is in for the touchdown. Brian Pummel, the ball carrier, goes the four yards over his own right side. Some good blocking up front by Troy Mallott and Jeff Priest leading Pummel over right tackle. That makes the score 13 to nothing in favor of Perrysburg. 441 remaining here in the first half, and we'll have the point try coming up. Rod Mercer will try the point after. And holding Eric Tudor. Ball down, kick of the air. The kick is good. Timeout on the field with a score. Perrysburg, 14. Anthony Wayne, nothing. Mercer's kickoff. Bye-bye. That's out of here. With the win, Mercer banged one over the, well, wide of the crossbars, but <laughs> that uh, had plenty of distance. It actually uh, would have gone out of this stadium had they not had the fence going around the track here. Mercer got the great leg, and of course, with that wind, it was... No contest as far as any potential run back concern. 441 left here in the uh, first half. It's 14-0 Perrysburg and Bill Park back to work. Of course, Park not only battling uh, Perrysburg, the clock, he's also battling that wind here in the second quarter. He sends Reader out wide to the left. And Park calling signals with a slot left. He fakes, he tries the draw, he gets ahead for about three yards. Well, he faked, he went back, looked for the pop pass, wasn't there, and just had to run it straight ahead and got it out to the 20 three-yard line, give them three, second and seven. Jerry, that time, Perrysburg did something interesting. They moved their defensive tackles down, head up the offensive guards, really putting pressure on the middle of that Anthony Wayne offensive line, and again, uh, responsible for a short gain by Anthony Wayne. Mercer was in there on the tackle slot, left of the backfield. Billy Park calling signals, as it's second down and about seven. He fakes in there, unloads it, it's blocked! Blocked at the line of scrimmage. Pummel got the arms up in the air and batted that ball down. That's part of good pass defense when you're a lineman. Get those arms up. Well, Brian Pummel, it's an interesting situation. Here he is, a tailback, and does a super job as a linebacker. Third and seven, Anthony Wayne at their own 23, treading 14-0. They break out of it now and send Reeder out wide to the left. And we have a slot right in the backfield. Moss is the slot man. Park has Turpening and Zitzer back there, and he's back to throw the football. Got some time, unloads it, and it's incomplete, I believe. He trapped the football, he being Chuck Grass of the tight end. The ball was actually thrown behind him. And I'll tell you, Tom, trying to pass into this wind is, is well, like trying to kiss oh. your sister. It's almost impossible. Well, kiss your sister? <laughs> Obviously, you haven't kissed your sister lately. Anyway, there was the, the, the problem was there was good pressure on a quarterback, and they were trying to throw another screen. It was well covered. Back to do the punting. Randy Lauder once again. And Perrysburg's going to have probably excellent field position here again. He's back at the 10. Gets the snap. Block is on. Gets a floater out of the air. And look at that thing. Just like a wounded duck. Just hang up in the air. Takes a reverse roll. And it's downed. Oh, that's unbelievable. 
That ball just hung up there and fluttered around like a wounded duck. And then, to add insult to injury, it took a, a reverse roll going against Anthony Wayne. Some days you can't make a wooden nickel. It's about an eight, seven, eight-yard punt, Jerry. Well, they'll bring it in from the near sideline. 30, that's the 34-yard line. And here's Perrysburg with excellent field position again, leading 14 to nothing. And as we said at the top of the broadcast, win the very important factor in this one tonight. And I guarantee you, Perrysburg would like to get in for another one here before halftime. Kent State marching band uh, playing a little background music. Back to runner, throw the football to Spezzan, unloads it, man down, complete. It'll be a touchdown, five, he's in. Mercer, Jerry. Any flags? No flags. Mercer. Rob Mercer. Rod he got behind that secondary. Position, ran a wide cut. Good running fake by the backs. Good fake by Pheasant. Set up. Toss that pass. 34 yards for a touchdown. Well, you know, he came out of nowhere, he being Mercer, and he got behind the secondary at about the 15-yard line, and uh, Pheasant waited little little time at all and just unloaded that and it was there all the way kick up kick good uh, by no good pardon me well i that's that'll teach you kyle i went with uh, eric tudor the holder who was jumping up and down saying what's good but i think he was trying to psych out the official it was wide to the left so the kick is no good and uh, that makes the score now 20 to nothing in favor of perrysburg over to anthony wayne we have the kickoff by perrysburg and bringing it back trying to get some yardage out of the 25, the 30, the 35, and all the way out to the 50-yard line. Goes Zitzer. And now it'll be first down and 10 yards to go here for Anthony Wayne. At the 50-yard line. 303 remaining here. Oh, pardon me. Back to throw the back. Oh, my. He's in trouble. He gets away from one man out of the shotgun at the 50 and uh, into the sideline and out of bounds. Well, there's... They're going to throw everything at us tonight. Now it's how I can see that. Here's Randy Lauder going back out of the shotgun. The question is, will we be able to handle it? <laughs> I don't know. It's at the 45-yard line right now at Perrysburg where he's knocked out of bounds here on the uh, near side by Doug Jones. And they'll line up now with a second out of about five to go. Now they're coming out of the shotgun again. They're spread out all over the place. In this passing formation, Randy Lauder is back there doing the passing. And loads it sideline left. It's complete and a nice grab around the knees and let's give the credit to Carl Rowan no one made the tackle as Rowan made the reception and went right down there so That's the ball Anthony is Wayne's first first down Jerry first first down of the football game and it's now at the Perrysburg uh, 37 yard line with only 243 left in the uh, half the general linemen better watch out because they're lining up their right guard is lining up in the backfield all right lot is back to throw again unloads it down the middle it's going to be intercepted at the 25 back out at the 30 Across the grain at the 35 and down he goes. The interception was made by Tudor, Eric Tudor. Eric Tudor, Jerry, is Lou Tudor's son, the head coach at Northwood High School. Two minutes and 26 seconds remaining in the half. It is 20 to nothing in favor of Perrysburg as the Jackets have come out and have stung the Anthony Wayne Generals here in this first half. <laughs> Back to are you with me? <laughs> Doesn't is the ball carrier, and he pitches back and trying to get outside, looking for some running room. And I don't know if he's going to find it. That's Troy Malad, and Malad is hammered down. Right around the 39-yard line and getting off the bottom of the pile is Robert Booker, who's played a fine game defensively for Anthony Wayne. However, there's a pickup on the play of about four yards. It'll be second and six, Perrysburg now. At their own 38. Minute and 45 to go here in the first half. It is 20 nothing in favor of Perrysburg. Pheasant leads him out again. Well, a slot right of the backfield. And Pheasant looking back to throw the football. He cuts up the middle. 45 outside at the 50. At the 45, running for the sideline at the 40. And down he goes. Across the far side of the field, a little bit of nifty running that time by the quarterback, Pheasant. He wanted to pass. It wasn't there. And he was finally brought down by Greg Brooker again. Jerry, as you mentioned, he did want to pass. He set up for a quick look-in pass. He, the receiver was well covered. He started running up the field, cut back against the grain, and almost sauntered into the end zone. 
and uh, we have another first down for Perrysburg. At the 34 of Anthony Wayne with a minute and 15 to go on the half. 20 nothing in favor of the Perrysburg Yellow Jackets. And they line up in a T formation. Pheasant calling the signals. He hands off, trying the left side this time. Priest at the 20 yard line. Nice That's block. First down. Nice trap block by Jim Jacoby, the right guard. Pulled out, trapped the defensive end, running the wing back counter. Jeff Priest picked up the first down. Poucher on the tackle. It is a first and 10. And I'll have to search out that yard marker now. That's the 22. There's another. Uh, Young man who is the son of a former uh, football player, Ron Kucher's son, uh, made that tackle. Former great at DeVilvis. Calling signals. Pheasant back to run a throw, looking, unloads it. It's complete and down at the 11-yard line. No, he says incomplete. Yeah. Had to squirt out of there when he hit the ground. Must have. Defending on the play for Anthony Wayne was uh, Rob Brooker. My gracious, I thought that pass was complete all the way. Second down and 10. Bring it back. 52 seconds to go in the half. Had 20 he, to nothing. Had he caught the ball, Jerry, it would have been a fantastic catch, but he because he was surrounded by about three Anthony Wayne generals. 52 seconds to go here in the half. It's 20 nothing in favor of Perrysburg. Slot right. Pheasant calling signals. Open field to the right. Pitches back and trying to get outside with that football and running hard with it. His power. And he's down. Ooh, they might have a flag. Nope. Guess not. Flag in the backfield. The 11-yard line. There is a flag down in the backfield, Jerry. I'll tell you, Greg Booker is playing one whale of a game for Anthony Wayne defensively. Back where it's uh, where it was thrown, it looks like a hold against Anthony Wayne. Or excuse me, against Perrysburg. 45 seconds remaining here in the first half. It is 20 to nothing in favor of Perrysburg. 15 big ones against the Perrysburg Yellow Jackets. When I was saying and remarking that that first half was rolling right along, all of a sudden it's kind of bogged down a little bit here in the last uh, three minutes of play. Well, that'll push the ball out over the 35 to the 38-yard line of Anthony Wayne. Second down and long. Second at about 25. Open field to the left, slot left of the backfield. Quarterback is Pheasant. And he rolls back to run and throw the football. Look out from the blind side. The ball is high in the air, and it's an incompleted pass. Well, he got blindsided that time by Kevin Ireland. Kevin Ireland, coming from his left defensive tackle position, broke down the pass protection and hit Steve Pheasant just as he was ready to throw the ball. And as you mentioned, Jerry, it went high in the air. It looked like a pop foul. You got the feeling that Perrysburg wants one more here before halftime? They're putting it up. Yeah, I get that feeling there. Yeah. They're leading 20 to nothing. And I have a feeling that uh, what they're doing here is taking advantage of the wind, Tom. They want to get as many points on that scoreboard as possible with the wind at their back. Slot right. Doesn't calling signals. Quarterback sneaks straight ahead 35, maybe 34. And on the bottom of the pile for Anthony Wayne is uh, Spillis. Jerry, Steve Pheasant, playing defense last week, was the first man to score against the Lake Flyers. He uh, took back an intercepted pass, 55 yards, to uh, notch the first points against Lake all season. Fair try field goal here. Rob Mercer with a fourth down and a mile. Fourth and about 24, and the ball is spotted. At the 34-yard line, at Anthony Wayne's 34, Anthony That's Wayne about the 42. Out, Anthony Wayne's brief time out here to talk this situation over. Well, I'll tell you, he's got that tail blowing at his back. Mercer does. I don't think there's. I. I'll tell you, I think he can get it there with that win. All he needs is direction. Mm -hmm. Because he certainly will have the distance with the help of the wind. 26 seconds to go in the half. And we've got a 20 nothing football game in favor of Perrysburg. They've led all the way that first quarter was an interesting struggle, but uh, Perrysburg came alive late in that first quarter now with the wind at their back. They've put in three touchdowns here. And uh, right now, Anthony Wayne has their instructions. And of course, Mercer is just out there contemplating the situation, holding on this attempted field goal, Tudor. 
Slight angle to the left. Boy, this is going to be a whopper. Waiting for the snap ball down. The kick is in the air. He's got distance. It is wide to the right. He had the distance, but not the direction. He missed it by maybe a couple of yards to the right of the up bar. Anyway, Wayne will take over first and 10 on their own 20 with 21 seconds to go in the half. 20 nothing in favor of Perrysburg. The marching generals lining up. We want to hear some of that band music here at halftime. Boy, they do a super job. Yes, they do. Anthony Wayne there late in this second quarter went into the old shotgun. And now they're going to go back to the basics here. And Parker's back in there at quarterback now. And he gives over the left side and running the football is Zitzer and he hits a stone wall pummel the first man there to get him second down still about 10 to go Anthony Wayne at their own 20 that'll end the half with 6 seconds with 5 with 3 seconds with 2 and that's it posing as the stone wall was Don Whitner that is the end of the first half with the score Perrysburg 20 Anthony Wayne nothing Jerry, just briefly, let me give you the scoring plays in the first half. With 2.15 left on the clock in the first quarter, Perrysburg crossed the goal line as Greg Gominger took a pitch out from Steve Pezen, swept around right in for six yards and a touchdown, score six to nothing. Rod Mercer's kick was good, seven to nothing at the end of the first quarter. With 4.41 on the clock in the second quarter, Perrysburg scored again as Brian Pummel Ran off right tackle for a couple yards. Mercer's kick was good. Again, the score, 14 to nothing. In fact, that uh, touchdown came after Perrysburg took over on the Anthony Wayne 39 after a very short punt. And that drive was aided by a face mask and a personal foul penalty. And by the way, that first touchdown culminated a 73-yard drive by the Perrysburg Yellow Jackets. The final touchdown of the first half came at 321 uh, of the second quarter, again as a result of a uh, short punt. Steve Pheasant's pass to Rod Mercer for 34 yards on a fine play-action fake. Mercer running a fly cut, was all alone, gathered the ball in, raced the rest of the way. Rod Mercer's kick this time was wide, and the score at halftime, 20 to nothing. Gee, there. Chalk talk, so to speak, for the second half. You've got a team, Anthony Wayne, down 20 to nothing here at halftime. Uh, you're wondering what uh, what's going on in that Anthony Wayne locker room here. Uh, what would be your conjecture? Well, Jerry, now coming out in the second half, uh, they'll hope to get good field position, and uh, they will also hope uh, to uh, be able to take advantage of the win. But they will be kicking off now, and uh, utilizing the wind at their back, uh, they can get the ball deep in Perrysburg territory. <laughs> Coach uh, Schoonmaker is telling his defense that they're going to have to do their best to force a fumble or to stop Perrysburg, so they'll be forced to punt into that wind, thereby giving Anthony Wayne good offensive field position. Taking it in from there will be the, the task of the Anthony Wayne offense, which really has not been able to get on track because Perrysburg has been doing an outstanding job of reading and flowing to the ball. Uh, that's about all uh, Coach Schoonmaker can say. It's just a matter of blocking and tackling from this point on and taking advantage of the, the breaks that you make for yourself. You have to point out, as far as individuals are concerned, a young man for Anthony Wayne, particularly defensively, number 40, Greg Brooker, the 5'11", 160-pound senior, who I thought just played a super game on defense for Anthony Wayne uh, in the first half. Uh, conversely, for the Perrysburg Yellow Jackets, and of course, as we are well aware, this is a team game, but always there are some young men that uh, seem to outdo themselves every particular Saturday or Friday evening as we view the games around the area. Brian Pummel, I believe, uh, uh, both offensively and defensively, Tom, has played an outstanding game for the Jackets here in this first half. Yes, and also um, uh, Steve Pheasant has done a, a fine job. Rod Mercer uh, with his kicking. Uh, Jeff Priest from his wingback position. Troy Mawad has carried the ball well uh, on occasions. And defensively for Anthony Wayne, Chuck Grass from his middle linebacker position has really done 
an outstanding job. Uh, uh, although, it's, it, you know, it's kind of hard to figure how can Anthony Wayne be doing an outstanding job defensively, but uh, singularly, uh, Chuck Grass has been doing a good job pulling the ball and putting hits on the Perrysburg running back. Calisthenics here to start the second half. Uh, always do this in high school. Uh, he has cut down on injuries. It's a 20-0 halftime score, Perrysburg. The Jackets dominated that entire second quarter, late in the first quarter and the second quarter. And they certainly, they being Perrysburg, are in excellent position right now in this football game. Now Anthony Wayne will have the wind with him here in this third quarter. In case you just joined us, it started out as a defensive battle uh, late in the first quarter. Perrysburg was able to get one in, then they completely controlled the football in the second half with the wind at their back. And so Anthony Wayne obviously going to come out here in this third quarter with the wind, feeling that they've got to get as many points on that scoreboard as they can and get them quickly. Jerry, uh, Perrysburg scored on that 73-yard drive without putting the ball once in the air. And uh, again, going against this wind this evening, it's almost impossible to have any type of pass offense against the wind. All right, Perrysburg, of course, will be receiving the kickoff. Hummel is back deep and kicking off here for Anthony Wayne. But again, he's kicking off with the wind, that's number 39, Matt Zitzer. Look at this. And an onside kick is tried. It's bobbling around. It's touched by Perrysburg. It's recovered by whom? Anthony Wayne. Well, they come out and try the onside kick. It works to perfection. Anthony Wayne recovered and recovering the football for the Generals was number 37, Doug Hutcher. Well, Anthony Wayne will start first and 10 on the Perrysburg 35. And I'll tell you, Jerry, that's the kind of thing that they had to do to get uh, back into this ball game. They'll have to stick it in the end zone on this drive. Billy Park leads them out now with the twin flankers out wide to the right. And he gives over the right side, and there was a lot of ball showing on that one. Matt Zitzer, the ball carrier, and he got a couple of yards in there, but boy, there was a lot of ball hanging out there on the tackle. Steve Seaman for Perrysburg. That's the 34-yard line. The initial line, the 35, as Tom said, so it's second down and about nine to go. Anthony Wayne at Perrysburg, 34. Porto out over the ball. Twin flankers out wide to the right. Grass and Reader. Mark is your quarterback. Has an eye in the backfield now. And a little flare pass out here. And he's going to run the football at the 35, at the 30, and then out of bounds. And running the football was Randy Lauder. Well, that they... time, Park just straightened up and throw to one of his twin flankers who stepped back uh, off the line of scrimmage and I believe he was going to throw that football yes Jerry he was looking downfield for a receiver he did come back from his foot position taking in essence a lateral pass from the quarterback allowing him to throw a forward pass but the receiver was well covered and he was forced to run well they picked up about five it'll be third and just about five now for Anthony Wayne just outside the Perrysburg 30-yard line. Twin flankers out wide to the right part, calling signals. There's a handoff over the right side, and running with the ball is Zitzer, and he got it inside the 30 to about the 29-yard line, where he is belted down there. And the first man to get him was Jay Swede for Perrysburg. That'll be short of the first down. It'll be fourth and about four. 10.48 to go, third quarter. Perrysburg 20, Anthony Wayne nothing. In with a play. For Anthony Wayne is Randy Lauder. Out of the football game is Ed Moss. Out over the ball is Bordeaux. And out wide to the left is Reeder. High in the backfield. Zitzer interpreting. And Park is your quarterback calling signals. Slot right in the backfield. And he gives to a second man through behind some blocking. He does not make the first down. Turpening is hit and brought down. Good defensive play here on the near sideline. And the man there down getting him for Perrysburg was Dean Clark, number 31. So Anthony Wayne is able to do anything here after that onside kick to start the second half. Gave him great field position at the Perrysburg 35. Unable to move it for the first down as they stall at the 29. And Pheasant back to work now going into the wind with 10 minutes remaining here in the third quarter. Perrysburg leading 20 to nothing. He gives to his tailback, straight ahead, pummel the ball carrier, and he pummels over the left side, out across the 30 to the 36-yard line, and he is hit and brought down there. The first man to get him is Bill Spillis. But there's a pretty good gain on the play from the 29 out to the 36 of about seven yards. It'll be second and three for the Jackets. 
They lead 20 nothing. 9.40 to go, third quarter from Perrysburg High on a windy night here in Perrysburg as we look out over the expressway. 4.75, a lot of traffic out there tonight. Slot left. And a handoff to Pummel trying the right side and a fine defensive play across the field by Chuck Grass, the six foot 180 pound junior, as he got in there very quickly and lowered the bloom. And there's a player shaken up on the play. That's Doug Jones, the offensive center for Perrysburg, being administered to here with 9.21 remaining in the third quarter. 20 to nothing in favor of the Perrysburg Yellow Jackets. Tom, you've got the glasses on, and it looks like it's the young man's, what, his... Looks like his uh, right knee, Jerry. Right knee. Trainer is down there with him. Defensively, Anthony Wayne was coming on that particular play. They almost got Steve Pheasant before he handed off to Pummel. And then a good hit over there by Glass, as you mentioned, and uh, or Grass, excuse me. And uh, that will bring up a third and about three mm. situation. Dam Schroeder's Home Federal Savings and Loan, Charlie's Dodge, Kazmaier Supermarkets, and the Lorraine Oil Company, Bernie Schneider, a good friend down Bowling Greenway. Nice to have him along. Coming out uh, pretty much under his own power is Doug Jones. Gets a nice hand, limping ever so lightly. So he, possibly a, an ankle problem there as he comes hobbling over to the sideline, or knee problem. Yeah, he's really favoring that right ankle or knee. All right, Pheasant is the quarterback with the third and about three. Power eye in the backfield, pitches back. Trying to get outside with that football is Pheasant, and Pheasant is hit and brought down right around the 39-yard line, and that's awfully close to a first down. Another Perrysburg player shaken up on the play. And from the 29 out to the 39 should indeed be a first down, but we have another jacket shaken up on the play. And it is, well, I see a two down there, Tom, but I cannot pick up his other number. 20 to nothing, the Yellow Jackets lead here. They'll have it first and 10 out at their own 39. They're still working over the young man here at the 35. Could be Brian Pummel. Uh, I don't want to speculate, but uh, I don't see him in the huddle. All I see is the two. Now, Doug Jones came out limping. Uh, he is sitting now on the bench here on the near sideline, so nothing really serious there but now they brought the stretcher out here oh excuse me that is not Brian Pummel and uh, they don't want to take any chances here with this young man and we don't want to alarm anyone obviously so we're not even going to speculate what the problem is other than to say that there is an injury on that previous play to a Perrysburg yellow jacket we do not know who he is eight minutes and 47 seconds remaining here in the third quarter it is 20 to nothing in favor, 20 to nothing, in favor of Perrysburg. 8.47 to go here in the third quarter. And tonight's game brought to you with the best wishes of Dam Schroeder's one, are you on Home Federal three? Savings and Loan, Charlie's Dodge, Kazmaier Supermarket, and the Lorraine Oil Company. And now, Tom, they are trying to lift the young man up on the stretcher. And I... And they still don't have him up there now. Uh, what yet. they're doing, Jerry, they're they're talking to him. Uh, they, they're bringing the doctor out. To, again, if there's any chance of a neck injury, they don't want to make any overt movement. Would you until they are one and have him uh, one on the field? We've got a we've got a boy that needs to be moved. Very very careful, and they want to make sure that uh, he is uh, immobilized. I believe that was. Um, I think it, I, I Bob really Steinecker went out there, the athletic director here at uh, Perrysburg. Bob is out there. Now, I, th I have a feeling it might be the center that came in for uh, Doug Jones. Uh, I may be wrong there. I, they're bringing out the uh, per Perrysburg Rescue Squad. Okay. Well, while we have this delay then in the football game because of an injury, uh, let us uh, take a time out then with the score. Perrysburg 20, Anthony Wayne nothing. The two teams are still out there on the field. They are still huddled around the injured Perrysburg player. He is now sitting up. He is now sitting up, and he now has his helmet off. He has the helmet off, and he is sitting up. And so we continue to wait now to see what they're going to do here. They're going
going to help the young man up. They put a jacket on him. They got a jacket over him, and he is standing up uh, under his own power here. Still do not know who it is, other than to say that it is a Perrysburg Yellow Jacket, and he is being helped off the field. However, he appears to be uh, in pretty good shape. He says he's all right. I've got the binoculars on. He says, I'm okay. Rod Mercer? Is that Rod Mercer? Rod Mercer, then, is the ball player, but he appears to be, he's kind of shaking his head. Apparently got his, well, again, I don't want to speculate what it was. Uh, I was going to say maybe got his bell rung, but I don't want to speculate. No, I, I agree with you, Jerry, and and uh, I think he's going to be all right, but boy, I'll tell you, that that's, certainly was a scare. We're ready to go back to action here. Yes, we are. It's first down and 10, and a handoff to Pummel straight ahead, and he dances for some yardage. Out over the 40 to the 45-yard line, and that always kind of puts a little bit of a damper on any kind of athletic event when someone gets shaken up like that. Greg Brooker, again on the tackle for Anthony Wayne, make it second and about five. Perrysburg at their own 45 with 8-15 remaining in the football game. That's a short five. 20 nothing in favor of Perrysburg, and that's an out over the ball. All right. Gives to Pummel over the right side. He's got the first down at the midfield stripe. He had to get to the 49. Just power football here by Perrysburg on the tackle for Anthony Wayne was Mark Tiederman. And it's just plain out. And then another Perrysburg player shaken up. Ah, gracious, this is the third one. We've had one go out with an ankle or knee injury. And we've had Mercer uh, shaken up uh, with... And it's all rung out there, and now this looks like it might be the wind just knocked out. Yeah, you're right, Jerry. And again, as you mentioned, power football, they're lining up in the power eye. Uh, two lead backs uh, clearing the way for Brian Pummel, running an isolation play, a double team up front, and then isolation by the two lead backs. Well, they're administering first aid to this youngster, and all of a sudden this game has really started to slow down now primarily because of the the rash of injuries here in this third quarter we still have 752 remaining in the third quarter now they help the youngster up and uh, he'll be all right uh, that's jeff priest so priest comes off pretty much under his own power one of the student assistants down there giving him a hand but uh, he's he's going to be all right first and 10 perrysburg now at the midfield stripe pheasant in there pummel rider and a lot of scene action has so Priest is out, of course. Greg Gominger is at Gominger is in. Now. Okay, Gominger in. Power eye on the backfield, open field left. And back to runner throw, and look out, Pheasant unloads the ball, and it's overthrown. The intended receiver down here was uh, number 33. I believe it was, or it can't be Mercer. 32 and 33 look the same. That particular pass uh, was a play action fake in the backfield. Pheasant coming out, trying to hit the tight end, similar to the touchdown pass. But uh, the right end, Doug LaRue, did a good job of uh, forcing Pheasant to alter his pass. Second down option play, running at his Pheasant, and he's got about four yards to about the 45 or 6-yard line. And on the tackle for Anthony Wayne is Chuck Grass. And give him four. It'll be third and six, Perrysburg, at the Anthony Wayne 46. With seven minutes remaining in the third quarter, 20 nothing in favor of Perrysburg. Now the ball is between the hash marks, and the Jackets are moving right to left across your dial. And they'll line up into a, well, slot right in the backfield. Pheasant is your quarterback. He keeps the football, pitches back, trying to turn the corner. Gummersal, and he gets it down to a very near first down territory. I believe he has the first down at the 40-yard line. With his nose down there is Chuck Grass. Now we find out number 33 is Greg Kamal for Perrysburg, who has been in on a couple of plays here in the last few minutes. Six and a half minutes to go in the game here in the third quarter. It is 20-0 Perrysburg as they continue to shuffle players, Tom, in and out on us. Perrysburg does. Well, Ed Fennerty and uh, Dave Neal alternated that split end, and 
And Greg uh, Gominger and Brian Pummel have been alternating at tailback. Go back, trap over the left side and squeezing in for about two or three yards, and that's about it. Come over the ball carrier. And from the 40-yard line, he gets to about the 38. And that's going to be a first down for Perrysburg once again with six minutes to go on the third quarter. They just keep it on the ground and pound at you into that win. Nothing fancy. In this drive, Pheasant has tried one pass, and he overshot his mark on that one. 5.59 to go third quarter. 20-0 in favor of Perrysburg. And they'll line up in a slot left in the backfield. Pheasant calling signals. Open field is to the left, and he's back to runner. Throw the football. Unloads it. Man is there. Incomplete. Underthrown. It was intended for Jeff Priest. And defending on the play for Anthony Wayne, Greg Brooker, the 5'11", 160-pound senior. Bring it back then and make it second down. Second down and still about, and still 10 yards to go with the ball at the 38-yard line of Anthony Wayne. Mike Ryan is in. And Trinity is out. Ryan is lined up split out wide to the left. It is a slot left in the backfield. Pheasant calling signals. And he keeps the football, keeps it, cuts it inside, gets it to about the... Yeah, that's right around the 35-yard line. Well, he's nailed there. Of course, that'll be far short of the first down. Doug LaRue on the tackle for Anthony Wayne. That's at the 34-yard line where it is third down now. And about six, six and a half yards to go for that first down. Five minutes remaining third quarter. The clock continues to roll. Perrysburg leading 20-0. And they line up with Neal out wide to the left. And we have a slot left in the backfield. And here's that third down play. Cousin calling signals. Wants to throw. Can't. Cuts it inside. And he's downed to the 30-yard line where he's tripped up there. That'll be short of the first down and bring up fourth. Now the tackle for Anthony Wayne then was Doug Coucher. Make it fourth down in about three. Well, Jerry, in, in uh, about three other situations, with the exception of the last fourth down play, Perrysburg has gone to their, their sweep. In order to pick up the first down, it'll be interesting to see uh, what play they call in the huddle at this juncture. Marysburg leading 20 to nothing. 4.40 to go, and they'll line up and go for it with a fourth and three at the 30-yard line of Anthony Wayne. Back to runner throw, pitch back. He's going to get that first down, trying to get outside his gummers. Oh, 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 great defensive play, and there's old number 40, Greg Booker once again. He's played an outstanding game. I thought for sure he was going to get the first down, but out of nowhere came Greg Booker to nail him right there at the 30-yard line and turn the ball back over to Anthony Wayne. A splendid defensive play for the Generals and Mr. Brooker with 4.20 left in the third quarter. 20-0 in favor of Perrysburg. Reader is out wide to the right. Parker's your quarterback, and he lines him up on a slot right of the backfield. Your slot man is Moss, and he pitches back. Here's the tailback pass coming up with the win. Downfield man there, and it's overthrown by two yards. The intended receiver was Reader, and defending down here on the play for Perrysburg was Eric Tudor. There's the tailback pass that time, and throwing the ball was uh, Billy Park, who that time obviously was not in at quarterback. And they're really mixing things up on us here. Now we'll line up, and let's see who the quarterback's going to be. Park is now at quarterback, and back there is Turpening and Zitzer. It is second down and 10 at the 30-yard line of Anthony Wayne. And there's a pitch back here and trying to get outside, and he's not going to go anywhere. And that being Matt Zitzer, heads up defensive play. And Mr. Ryan Pummel uh, got him right there at the 30-yard line. So it's third down and a long 10. The ball is actually inside the 30 with only 3.50 to go in the third quarter, and the clock continues to roll. 20-0 Perrysburg. Jerry, any time you uh, try a trick play like that, uh, the best time to utilize it is after a ch uh, change of hands of the, of the football, putting a quarterback in a tailback. Now, Reader out wide of the right, and in the slot this time comes Randy Lauder. Park is your quarterback, splits his setbacks two yards, and whoop, we've got movement, and it's a question now of who done it. Well, Jay Sweet uh, did uh, encroach in the neutral zone, Jay Sweet uh, being a sophomore middle guard who has really impressed me this evening, Jerry. Three and a half minutes to go on the quarter. 20-0 Perrysburg over Anthony Wayne, and now the Generals want a timeout to talk it over. And so there's a timeout on the field with a score. 
Harrisburg, 20, Anthony Wayne, nothing. Here's a quick kick by Anthony Wayne, end over ender with the win. Bounces out here at the 50, rolls laterally and down there. First and 10, Perrysburg. Perrysburg will take over at the Perrysburg 49-yard line, and Pheasant is back to work now with a slot left. And he gives to Pummel at the 50 to the 49, the 48, maybe the 47-yard line, and that's it. Doug Coucher on the tackle for Anthony Wayne, and the clock continues to run with 2.50 remaining in the third quarter. And from the 49-yard line of Perrysburg to about the 47-yard line of Anthony Wayne. About a four-yard pickup, second down and six yards to go, and Perrysburg going into that win, leading 20 to nothing. However, Perrysburg just grinding it out here on the ground in this third quarter, trying nothing very fancy here into the wind, really chewing up a lot of uh, time on that clock. It's a power eye in the backfield. Pheasant uh, sticks it in there to his fullback, trying to turn the corner across the far side and actually running out of room that time uh, was number 33 running the ball, and that's Greg Gominger. It was Gominger? Pardon me. Gominger, the ball carrier, run out of bounds over there by Chuck Grass. Or did he get out of bounds? Yes, he did. The clock has stopped. Jerry, I, I have to reflect a little bit about on that quick kick. Uh, I don't really understand. I'm not second-guessing, but... Uh, I, I would uh, feel that Anthony Wayne would use as much uh, time as they could with that win. Slot left in the backfield. Doesn't call egg signals. He's back to throw the football into the win. Out of the backfield, complete Palmer at the 50, at the 45, at the 40, at the 35, at the 30, at the 25, at the 20, at the 15, at the 5, and down he goes. At about the three-yard line. Pummel the ball carrier, a little flare pass out of the backfield to his running back, all the way down to the four-yard line of Anthony Wayne, where he was drugged down there by Cross. It's about a 46-yard pass play, all told, Jerry. First and goal, Perrysburg. Well, they went to the short stuff that time into that win, just a little flare pass out of the backfield. And Hummel was really picking him up. With 2.05 to go third quarter, Perrysburg about ready to go in again. And it's been all Peberg here tonight. Power eye on the backfield, dive over the left side to the three, to the two, to the one-yard line. On the tackle for Anthony Wayne was Brooker. And the ball carry was Como. Well, oh, he ran hard, too. Second and goal, Perrysburg just a yard away from Pater. They lead 20-0, ready to go in again. And the clock continues to roll with just a minute and a half to go in the third quarter. We had quite a lengthy third quarter here because of uh, three successive injuries to the Perrysburg Yellow Jack ball players, but uh, all of them seem to be okay. Hand off, left side, touchdown, Perrysburg. Getting in there was Como. That makes it 26 to nothing in favor of Perrysburg. And the point try coming up with a minute and 21. One to nothing. The Yanks lead the Dodgers in the third inning. Two nothing? Oh, pardon me. Two to nothing. All right. And that's Mr. Gidry on the mound tonight for the Yankees. And with a two-run lead, he will be tough. Here's the point try coming up by Steve Pheasant. Ball is down. The kick is in the air. He's got the distance. Does he have the direction? He does. I'm out on the field with the score. Perrysburg, 27. Anthony Wayne, nothing. Kickoff taken by Greg Brooker on a short kickoff at the 20, and he gets it back out to the 32-yard line of Anthony Wayne, where it's first down and 10. Well, the Generals now trading 27 to nothing, with only a minute to go here in this uh, third quarter. 27 to nothing. It's been all Perrysburg here since late, since very late in the first quarter of play. Now we're going into the shotgun here for Anthony Wayne, and back is Biddy Park. Gets the snap at the 25, rolls out of it, looking sideline, and loads it downfield, and it's intercepted at the 48-yard line. Intercepted. Picking it off was Dave Neal for Perrysburg, and just nothing going right here for the Generals tonight. First and 10, Perrysburg at their own 48, and they're having a field day here at their home field. I don't know if that was a play on words or what, Jerry, but I'll tell you right now, uh, the uh, shotgun is not working well for Anthony Wayne because the quarterback is forced to scramble, and uh, that certainly isn't part of the scheme. We may have a new... No, we don't. Same quarterback, Steve Fezzard in there, slot right, and he's back to throw. Fakes the throw, draw play, 50, 45, and hit from behind and brought down. That will be very close to ending the quarter on the tackle for Anthony Wayne. 
was Doug Coucher. And just 20 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. The ball is now resting at the 45-yard line of Anthony Wayne, where it is second down and just a couple of yards to go. And we probably have one more play of this quarter, and that'll be it then. They'll line up in the T in the backfield as the fullback cheats up a little bit. Doesn't. Options, hands off in there, and running hard over the right side, and Como, I believe, is the ball carrier. He strings him out, and that's close to a first down. That is the quarter. That's very close to a first down, so that is the end of the third quarter now with a score. Perrysburg, 27, Anthony Wayne, nothing. We start the fourth quarter now here, 27, nothing, Perrysburg on top. They have the ball at the 39-yard out of Anthony Wayne. Pheasant back, little flare pass out of the backfield to Finnerty. He's got it, and he gets it down to... Now, let's see. About the 39, I believe. Let's see. 30, 35, 39. Yes, the original line I said was the 39. The original line was the 42. So give them three. It'll be second down and seven to go. And back to runner throw is Pheasant, the quarterback. He spins and he's hit and he's wrapped up right there along about the 39-yard line. And in on the tackle was Rusty Davis for Anthony Wayne. And that will bring up a third down now. And still about, uh, oh, make it six yards to go as he gained a yard on the play to the 38 of Anthony Wayne. 11 minutes remaining in the game. That's it. 27-0 Perrysburg leading. The first quarter was pretty much a standoff until very late in the first quarter when Perrysburg got on the board, and from then on, it has been all Perrysburg. Pheasant calling signals, slot right of the backfield, and Pheasant uh, fakes the draw. Back to throw, sideline right, man is there. It's incomplete, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Jeff Priest, down here at the 25. And he was there, he for was Anthony. Open. Yeah, Greg Booker defending, and he was open, Tom, no question about it. Bring it back and make it fourth down in about six at the 38 of Anthony Wayne. Now, Perrysburg, remember, has the wind with them here in this fourth quarter. And they may just decide to... Now we'll wait and see. They may decide to go for it here. Leading 27 to nothing. They've got the hand, the game well in hand with 10 minutes left in the ball game. And Tom, it's going to be kind of difficult to pick the WSBD star of the game tonight because we've had a lot of youngsters playing well. Slide ride in the backfield. Pheasant is back to throw the football. Setting up, he's got time. Out of the backfield, it's complete to Priest. He cuts inside at the 35. Outside, he gets away from one man, but not another, and he is short of the first down. On the tackle is Kevin Ireland for Anthony Wayne, and I believe he's going to be maybe uh, a half yard short of that first down. At You're the, right, Jerry. Anthony Wayne will take over. At about their 33, first and 10 for Anthony Wayne. The Generals unable to really get on track here this evening, Tom, offensively. They just haven't been able to get it going, and part of that credit obviously has to go to Perrysburg for their fine defense. Oh, there's no question that Perrysburg uh, defensively has really won the battle of the line of scrimmage. It just seems that uh, when Anthony Wayne uh, gets cranked up, uh, picks up uh, six, seven yards, uh, uh, Perrysburg rises to the occasion and forces them to punt. Now you really wonder if they're going to try to put the ball into the air, into this win. And your quarterback right now is louder. He splits his setbacks, and he keeps the football and runs over the right side and gets it out to the 35-yard line where he has built it down there. Give him a couple of yards on the play. It'll be second down and eight yards to go. And uh, on the tackle, the left side of that line, Steve Wrighty was the first man there to get him for Perrysburg. 9.45, that's all that's left in the game, and the clock is running here. 27-0 Perrysburg leading with Reeder out wide to the left. And out wide to the right is Moss. The quarterback now is... Well, we're back to the starting quarterback, Billy Park. Splits his setbacks, open field to the left, and he rolls out of there, and he hands off to the first man through, and that's Turpening, and he is hit and smashed right there at the line of scrimmage. Right, right Pummel. side. Pummel is the first man to get him. All right side of that Perrysburg line on the tackle. Dam Shoulders, Home Federal Savings and Loan, Charlie's Dodge, Casmire Supermarket, and the Lorraine Oil Company. Nice to have along this evening from Perrysburg High, where the Jackets are in command right here. Ryan Bordeaux out over the ball, and Bill Parks, your quarterback. He splits them right and left, Reeder and Haas. Calling signals with a yard split in the backfield, and he pulls back, fakes the handoff, keeps the ball, and boy, Perrysburg read it beautifully. They read the option just so very well. No chance of the quarterback, Billy Park, that time, and he put a good fake in there, too. But the defensive man for Perrysburg, Brian Pummel, just read it like it was drawn on the board, and there is no gain. Fourth down. And still about nine yards to go right there at the 33. And a punting situation now for Anthony Wayne. And boy, he's got that 
the very difficult task of punting into this stiff breeze, and that'll be Carl Rowan, 5'11", 160, N.A. senior. He'll be standing back around his 20-yard line with only eight minutes remaining here in the football game, 27 to nothing, and back deep. Safety for Peberg will go David Neal. All right, back at the 20-yard line to try to get something away here is Rowan. And he gets a high one. Well, look at that wind catch it, will you? Fair catch called for it. Bounces over a couple of Perrysburg heads. There's a flag thrown and downed by Anthony Wayne. Now, let's see what the call's going to be here. Did he? Was he touched, Bill, uh, out here at the 50-yard line? Did he give a signal for the fair catch? I, I, did I didn't see a signal. I didn't see a uh, signal either. I don't know either. if they're going to call interference or... I'll we'll have to check that out. Possibly obstruction. Uh, oh, no, no. It's going against Perrysburg, mm -hmm. Jerry. Mm -hmm. Pushing? That's right. Oh, wait a minute. He's, he's pointing the other way. I oh, know, it's got to be against Anthony Wayne, even though uh, the referee has given us two different signals. They're talking to the Perrysburg captain. That's about the only thing I can think. Uh, uh, they did not get, allow the Perrysburg receiver uh, an opportunity to catch the football. Well, a big discussion going on out here at the 45-yard line. I did not see a fair catch signal called, but still you have to allow the young man uh, a chance to catch the football. Here we go. We walk it back out. Nothing good has happened. For them. No, nothing. That's right. Bill. Nothing really good has happened for the generals here tonight at Hall. If it was going to go wrong, it's gone wrong for them. Well, here's the walk off from the 33. Ooh, down inside the 30, the 25, the 20. Oh my gracious! Down to the 19-yard line, and that is where. I'll all be forced to punt again. Yeah. But now Perrysburg's going to get fantastic field position here. Look at those streamers wrapped around the light pole across the way. They are blowing straight out. We've got some kind of a win here tonight. And I'll tell you something right now, you better get out the cannons at Dwight Perry Field tomorrow if this win continues this way because you will have a win that... Uh, well, you always have a win at Dwight Perry Field, but one like this, I'll tell you, those kickers better have a, a cannon in their foot uh, tomorrow afternoon. Of course, this is not to say that this wind is going to keep up tomorrow afternoon. But uh, that should be interesting down there at Bowling Green uh, tomorrow. The field is just about the same direction. Is it, Bill? Uh, not quite. field is very similar as far as the layout, directionally speaking, uh, at Bowling Green as is here at uh, Perrysburg. And now we have a discrepancy up on the press box on that previous statement. <laughs> and now we'll have a debate going on up here. Well, let, well, let, well the debate is going on. <laughs> I will get back to the game. <laughs> and there's the snap, and the block was on, and he gets a high floater, but look at the wind catch it. Out here at the 20, oh my, and it's down by reader of Anthony Wayne, the 20, 25, 30, that's the 33-yard line, Thomas. Well, I'll tell you, you know, much? If, if the Anthony Wayne punter had any kind of ego going into this game, it's really as deflated. <laughs> How many yards? Uh, a couple. A couple. A couple. First and 10 for Perrysburg. We're not, don't misunderstand us, we're not in any way laughing at the youngsters out here tonight punting. Uh, it's just, uh, it's a little bit of a humorous thing to see those balls go right up in the air. There's a pitch back and trying to get outside is Priest and a fine open field tackle as Priest is able to turn the corner inside the 30-yard line and got it down to about the 27-yard line. Excellent defensive play across the far side by Chuck Grass. Jerry, you're right. Uh, we're certainly not uh, uh, poking fun at all. This, this win is just so bad it's impossible for anyone even the Perrysburg punter experienced some problems going into that win remember Aubrey out here at Perrysburg I'd like to see him punt of this thing tonight he's at Miami right now we'll see him in a few weeks option play Pheasant who is he decked at the 26 yard line. I'll tell you Anthony Wayne's still out there smoking on defense they're still hitting and Mark Meyer is on the tackle with only seven minutes 659 left in the game as the clock merrily ticks along 27 to nothing, Perrysburg leading the Generals of Anthony Wayne. You mentioned Pat Aubrey. Last year in our perrysburg Maumee game here, uh, he came in with about a 45-yard punting average and came away after that game with uh, an average greatly reduced by the win. Yes, I recall that game. We had a, a blustery, uh, cool, windy night. Handoff trap play right side, running hard with the football, and he took a great hit out there, I'll tell you that. It was Ryder. 
He got slammed down right around the 20-yard line. On the tackle grass again for Anthony Wayne. One thing about Anthony Wayne, they have not laid down. They are still out there uh, doing their best, and they're hitting hard, and they, they're still in this ball game. Yes, they haven't given up. It's at the 20-yard line where it is first and 10 for Perrysburg. The Jackets lead it 27 to nothing. And Pheasant's still in there at quarterback. He's gone all the way. They line up with open field to the left in a T formation with the fullback cheating up. There's a handoff to the second man through, and he's got two or three yards. We've got a new running back in there for Perrysburg. That is Barry Johnson. And Barry is hit and brought down right around the 17 or 18-yard line by Mark Myers. Let's call it the 17. And so from the 20 to the 17, give them three. It'll be second down at about seven with 5.59 left in the game, and the clock continues to roll along. Perrysburg has the wind with them now. Johnson is in that backfield in the T formation, and Pheasant straightens up to run a throw. Pitches back here to Plummer outside at the 15, and he's down to about the 11-yard line where he's rammed out of bounds. Good pursuit that time on the part of... Curry, and when they spot the ball, they'll say the 11-yard line, and of course that stops the clock with 5.47 left uh, with them getting out of bounds. WSPD Toledo, 13.70 on your dial, your station for sports. Tomorrow, Toledo and Western Michigan from Kalamazoo, 1 o'clock, our pregame programming and kickoff at 1.30. Join us, won't you? At last report, the Yankees were leading the Dodgers 2 to nothing in the third inning of the third game of the World Series. Gidry on the mound for New York. Sutton started for the Dodgers. There's a handoff over the left side. Johnston running the ball. He got it down to about the 10. That's about it. The right side of that Anthony Wayne line. He on the tackle. Rit Rittner was the first man there to get him. And also helping out of the bottom of that pile for Anthony Wayne is Doug Coucher once again. Another fourth and short situation yep. for Perrysburg. Fourth and about two. The ball is at the, uh, let's say the 12. And he's got to get to the 10. He's got a couple of yards to go. With 5 minutes and 15 seconds left in the game. 27-0 Perrysburg. Cousin calling signals. Wing wide. And he pitches back Plummer at the 15, at the 10, at the 5, at the 4. Touchdown! It is a touchdown for... Brian Hummel. Hummel. Hummel found a big hole over the right side. Got that ball on the pitch back at about the 15-yard line. When he hit the seam at the 10, you knew he had one man to beat at the 5. He did and went in untouched. And so Perrysburg has upped their lead now from 27, make it 33 to nothing with five minutes to go in the game. And the point try coming up. The Pheasant will try... And Tudor will hold. Mercer's the kicker, but he got shaken up. Kick is up, and the kick is good. And that makes it 34 for Perrysburg. And nothing for Anthony Wayne. And a final timeout. There's the kickoff. And I'll tell you, that ball's bouncing around down there like a hot potato. Anthony Wayne, did they lose the football? Did Perrysburg recover it down there at the five or six-yard line? No, no, Anthony Wayne will, will take over. All right. At their own five-yard line. And going back to that fourth and short situation, Jerry, Again, Perrysburg uh, has a great deal of confidence in their pitch sweep, and they ran it in for another touchdown. Uh, Brian Pummel, uh, doing a superb job this evening, both offensively and defensively, took it in from the 12-yard line. I want to thank our sponsors, Dan Schroeder's Home Federal Savings and Loan, Charlie's Dodge, Chuck Floyd, Gary Sturrock, and all the fellas, uh, Kazmaier Supermarket, and Lorraine Oil Company. Nice to have them along tonight. Bernie Schneider down there in Bowling Green, our old buddy. I got to get him back out on that golf course again. It's getting a little late right now this year. But, Anthony uh, Wayne tried to run off tackle there, Jerry, and uh, Perrysburg threw them for a two-yard loss. But you're talking it, about Bernie Schneider in the golf course. Well, that'll make it second down and still, uh, well, now at about 12 yards to go, coming up to the four-minute mark. Calling signals, we have a new quarterback in and a handoff, and oh my, he's almost thrown for a safety. The new quarterback in there for Anthony Wayne is Tim Leonard, and he handed off to his first man through over the left side, Eddie Moss, and Ed was crunched right around the five. Let's see where they give him his penetration. Well, they say right around the four-yard line, where it's third down and still about 12 to go, and the clock just ticks away. Uh, the CBS Mystery Theater coming up. This game is only three minutes from being over, and we'll get off uh, very quickly here and wrap it up so we can join the CBS Mystery Theater. WSBD in Toledo, 1370 on your dial. Your station for sports, Toledo. And Western tomorrow, a quarterback keeper straight ahead, running the football for Anthony Wayne. 
is Timmy Leonard, the backup quarterback, and he's able to get it out over the 10, out to about the 12-yard line, 13, but he's short of that first down. It's fourth at about three, with three minutes, and the clock moving along, 2.59, that's all that's left, and of course, Anthony Wayne's going to probably have to, to punt here, and now Anthony Wayne wants to call a timeout. And since I cannot see the scoreboard, now I do, 34 to nothing. 34 for Perrysburg, nothing for Anthony Wayne here tonight. On a windy, cool evening in Perrysburg. Boy, that is a strong win. Well, Anthony Wayne wanted to talk it over here for a moment. They trail 34 to nothing, fourth down and about three to go. And there isn't very far to go here for Anthony Wayne as far as this ball game is concerned. Uh, they're going to obviously have to punt it. They've got to punt it into the wind. They're not going to get much distance on it, obviously, because uh, of the gale blowing out here at Perrysburg. Back to do the punting is Carl Roan. He's standing at the goal line. And there's the snap, and the block is on, and it's partially blipped. And it's out of bounds out here at the 20, 22 or 23-yard line. Perrysburg's going to take over right there. My gracious. That ball was partially blocked. He got it out to the 23. And let's see if Perrysburg is going to go with a new unit in here. I'm sure Anthony Wayne hopes so. Joe Calabrese. Looks like he may be in here at quarterback now. Joe Calabrese, number 12, pitches back and trying to turn the corner, and he's knocked out of bounds right around the 20-yard line. And running the football for Perrysburg, Barry Johnson again. And they bring it in from the near sidelines. They'll spot it right around the 20. Again, in the play of about four, it'll be second and six. You know, it's uh, really disheartening for a team to have as many problems with a kicking game as Anthony Wayne has had. And aided by this win, boy, that's really something. I don't believe I've ever seen anything like it, Tom. Uh, just a shame. Uh, it's really played a... And there's a mess up in the backfield now. Jim Heilman in there at quarterback as he bumps into his own man back there and finally has to eat the ball uh, back at the 22-yard line. So it's back nearly to the line of scrimmage, the original line. Make it third and nine, however. And only two and a half minutes left in the game and the clock just moves along. And we're getting set to pick out our WSBD star of the game here this evening. And your quarterback in there is Heilman right now. Oh, we've got uh, a missed call out there as Scotty Melvin blitzed from his slot back position offside, and that'll tack on five more. But you got a lot of new youngsters in there for Perrysburg right now. Well, the Jackets have it well in hand, 34 to nothing, with only 228 left in the game. At last report, we had the Yankees leading the Dodgers by the score of two to nothing in the third. That game obviously has rolled along since uh, our last report as of about 15, 20 minutes ago. All right, that'll move the ball back out over the 25 to the 28-yard line where it's third down and about uh, 15 to go. And your quarterback in there is Jim Heilman. Slot right in the backfield. Gentleman Jim fakes a little pop pass dropped by the intended receiver. It was intended for big number 82, Pat Munger. And uh, they'll bring it back and make it fourth down. Fourth down and still about 15 to go. Marysburg at the Anthony Wayne, 28, and they'll give it one more shot here with 2.20 left in the game. 34 to nothing. The Marysburg Yellow Jackets keep their title hopes alive in the Northern Lakes League. Come up with a slot right in the backfield. Hyman calling signals. Let's see if he puts it up. He's back to throw the football. The blitz is on. He unloads it, and it's incomplete. The official was there. Two white-shirted generals and the intended pass receiver. And it fell harmlessly to the turf. And the generals will take over now. First and ten at their own 28-yard line. And uh, with the score 34 to nothing, and the generals going into the wind, well, I'm not quite sure what they might try to do here. They may just try to... Well, there's not a whole lot they can do, Jerry. No. And because if uh, we look back on the first three quarters and the greater share of this quarter, it's been impossible for them to really get anything sustained. Timmy Leonard is your quarterback, and he lines him up in the line on the backfield. Leonard calling signals. On the long count, Leonard from his 28-yard line, and he pitches back and trying to run the football and turn the corner at the 25, at the 30, to the 35, and still running, and finally brought down way across the far side of the field is Rick Curry. 
And Rick is able to get that ball out over the 35 out to about the 37-yard line, and that's close to a first down. Two minutes remaining here in the game. And we'll have that WSPD star of the game for you very quickly because we're going to have to shake it up and get off the air to make room for the CBS Mystery Theater as soon as this game is over. Slot left in the backfield, and your quarterback... Here's Timmy Leonard with open field of the left, first and ten, and Leonard pitches back and trying to turn the corner to the far side. This time is Curry once again, and he is hit and brought down in a good, good defensive tackle by Jay Swede. There's actually a loss on the play of a couple of yards. 36-yard line, so a loss of a couple of yards. Second and 12, minute and 45, and the clock continues to roll. And we will announce to you now that the WSBD star of the game is Brian Pummel of Perrysburg. Brian Pummel, the WSBD star of the game. Congratulations to Brian and all of his Perrysburg teammates. There is a counterplay over the right side and running hard with that football and trying to get a little yardage is John Cross. And he is able to get it back out to the 39-yard line, where it is now third down and about eight. For Perrysburg Anthony is substituting quite freely, and uh, there's a little bit of confusion as to who should be on and who should be off. Only a minute to go in the game time, and uh, Anthony Wayne may just try to run it out here with 58 seconds to go, and Leonard leads him out. They trail Anthony Wayne does, 34 to nothing against Perrysburg here, and there is a big little pop pass over the middle. Complete, nice job, and it's very close to a first down. Very close to a first down out here near the midfield stripe, and on the reception for Anthony Wayne was Mike Ramirez, and they'll have to bring the chains in with 37 seconds left. That's the 47-yard line of Anthony Wayne. And so some of these youngsters that don't get all that much playing time are seeing a little action here tonight. Um, they'll stretch the chains out around the 47, and when they put it down, doggone, they just can't even make a first down, can they? He's about three inches shy of that first down. It's been one of those nights for the generals of Anthony Wayne. Yeah, they'll go back and regroup. And who knows what will happen next Friday time. They may come out and blitz somebody. Leonard leads him out. 34 seconds. The clock is running 30 seconds. Time for, uh, well, it depends upon what he's going to do. Fourth down in inches here. And he's back to runner throw of a football. He's going to keep it himself. And he tries to get it out of bounds. He does. And that, again, is very close to a first down. And the defensive play for Perrysburg is Bob Colby. It's a first down, Jerry. All right, first and 10. With 21 seconds left, we'll call up the 48-yard line of Anthony Wayne. Our star of the game is Brian Powell of Perrysburg, and our congratulations to Brian. Fine two-way performer, a tailback, and at the inside linebacker for the Yellow Jackets. And we'll wrap it up and remind you that tomorrow, of course, Toledo and Western Michigan, at 1 o'clock, kickoff at 1.30 from Kalamazoo. Back to throw or run is Leonard. Out of the pocket he goes. He's put down. Fine defensive play out there by Andy Hufford. Two seconds, one, and that's going to end it. That's it. Now we're going to wrap it up here very quickly. Uh, just suffice to say that Perrysburg, after starting out on this football game, kicking off to Anthony Wayne, uh, they kind of battered back and forth throughout the first quarter. Perrysburg finally got one in late in the first quarter, and from that time on, it was all Perrysburg Yellow Jacks. A great sportsmanship show. Here is the two teams line up at the midfield stripe, and uh, we go down the line shaking each other's hands. And there'll be another day for Anthony Wayne, and who knows what will happen next Friday or maybe next year against Perrysburg because these things can come back and bite you sometimes. But Anthony Wayne, just, I would say, Tom, you hit the keynote, their punting game really, or their kicking game really got him in trouble here tonight. Any final quick thought? Well, Jerry, the kicking game is so important in the game of football, and especially in high school football. And when the weather conditions are adverse as they were, uh, really, the key to the whole game was possibly uh, who won the toss. Okay, that'll do it then. Tonight's final score, seeing Perry's were winning at 34 to nothing over Anthony Wayne. You are a promise. You are a possibility. You are a promise. You're a promise. A promise with a capital P. You're a great big bundle. A great big bundle of, of potentiality! You are a promise, you are a possibility, you are a promise.
with the capital P. You are a great big bundle of potentiality. And if you listen, you will hear God's voice and hear.